Good morning, you wonderfully beautiful early risers. Welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast show. Just gone 7 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. Thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day. My name is Katla Khomabowe. I miss being able to give you high fives and stuff, dude. I, I was, All the way there. I was almost there, man. Come on, Graham Richards. Booyah, right there. There booyah, we go. I felt that one. I felt indeed, that one. Uh, Graham Richards. Thank you so much for tuning in. Been a stellar week so far. We're going to continue on that trajectory this morning. Today is all about the home. It's only fitting since we have been encouraged to stay at home, obviously, during the lockdown period. Uh, I mean, I moved into a new place before lockdown. Oh, yes, exactly. It feels like I've lived there for like 10 really? years. Really? Yeah, no, is that what, in a good way or a bad way? In a very good way. Oh. Sorted, redesigned the garden, done all our Lovely, little projects. Man. Man. But it's all about the home now. That's a good mm. thing. So today we'll be chatting all about the rules and regulations uh, mm -hmm. when renting and buying a home during COVID-19. How to stay fit from your very own lounge. <laughs> and then we'll also be exploring the wonders that can be found in your garden with somebody called the Garden Game Ranger. Right? Oh. There's, this, there's something called the Garden Game Ranger Challenge mm. out there that a lot of people are getting involved in and are discovering all the wonders. And now, now you creepy watch point. as the small dachshund makes his way across the lawn. Uh, no, it's all about home and garden this morning. Hopefully we'll inspire you along the way, but let's connect with the rest of the team. Good morning, gang. Good morning, boys are looking all salad uh, this morning. My name is Jamie Lee Dombek, reporting alive for duty this morning. Good morning, everybody, you special people. Of course, my name is Ryal the morning, and we're chatting to you at home. It's that time again, social media, and we're finding out, obviously, the theme is home and garden, and each one of you, I'm sure, have started some sort of a project, a DIY project at home, and we want to see how far and how that progress has gotten on. Did you even finish the project? <laughs> I know a lot of friends of mine that started something didn't actually get all the way. I don't know about you, Jamie. That is true. Like, Everyone had green fingers going into lockdown. I mean, we, we started this challenge where like, listen, plant a tree, plant everything. I didn't get to it, but I know you did. You have green fingers. Uh... <laughs> I, of course I do, nature boy at heart. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a cool little planter box that I set up and I grew some herbs and spices and things. Not spices, just herbs actually. Uh, I was like, wow, look at you. <laughs> so I had basil, mint and the whole shebang and it just really gave me that extra edge to our meal. So yeah, it was perfect. It was a success, I did finish it. So let us know, tune in and let us know on the social media channels what you guys have been up to. We want to see your pictures, your beautiful works of creation. Share it with the world, man. Absolutely. <laughs> And of course, we also have an amazing workout for you that can be incorporated into while you doing your green fingers and then come back inside, maybe use those tools to work out with us. So stay tuned for that. But right now we are heading over to those news headlines with Graham. Thank you so much, gang. Let's kick it off with our national news first. The Eastern Cape has asked the national government to assist its overwhelmed health services with Defence Force medical teams. The province is in the process of recruiting new doctors and nurses aimed at supplementing its newly recruited 7,000 health workers. So the National Treasury has also made available close to 8 billion rand to boost its healthcare systems. So far, 397 deaths have been registered in the province and more than 26,000 infections. Countrywide, 6,945 new cases and 128 deaths have been recorded over the last 24 hours, taking the total to 151,209 cases and 2,657 deaths. Then keeping it in South Africa, the passenger rail agency Prasa will resume train services this morning with a capacity of 15%. Routes from Pinarspoort to Pretoria, the southern line from Cape Town to Retreat, Port Elizabeth to Utenhage, as well as East London to Berlin will be in operation. Meanwhile, the Minister of Transport, Fagila Mbulula, says he is pleased with the commitment the taxi industry leaders have made to resolve their grievances with his department. The taxi industry yesterday started to load vehicles to 100% capacity to take trips across provincial borders in violation of the containment regulations. Then casting a wider net on the international front, the United Kingdom, the European Union and NATO have expressed concern and anger after China passed a controversial security law giving it new powers over Hong Kong yesterday. The US says it will restrict defense exports and technology access to China. The law is being placed in Hong Kong's mini-constitution 
criminalizing sedition and effectively curtailing any protests. Opponents say this undermines the autonomy set out in Hong Kong's mini constitution and civil liberties such as free speech, the right to protest and an independent and robust judiciary are at risk, they say. In Belgium's King Philippe has expressed his, and we quote, deepest regrets to the Democratic Republic of Congo for his country's colonial abuses. The reigning monarch made the comments in a letter to President Felix Tshisekedi on the 60th anniversary of the DRC's independence. Belgium controlled the Central African country from the 19th century up until it gained its independence in 1960. More than 10 million Africans are thought to have died during the reign of King Leopold II in the 19th century. The colonial leader's statue was recently removed from a public square in Antwerp. And now a story of nature left to, to run its course in Singapore. Those who have been there will tell you Singapore is probably the world's best garden city with trees lining roads, ample lush parks and grass and plants surrounding build, buildings. Trees are neat, grass is well trimmed and parks are constantly manicured. But now because of coronavirus restrictions, nature has been allowed to run wild. The result? Urban areas are bursting with life. Tall grass, wild flowers, and uh, fl wild flowers rather, insects, butterflies are in abundance. Uh, the quietness has also brought a unique opportunity to observe, and many wish for the meticulously groomed city to be left alone now to allow for a more spontaneous nature experience. In lockdown came, people were delighted because the high standards of green space maintenance fell by the wayside. This has led to a more active ecosystem and greater biodiversity in Singapore. Thousands have become more interested in the biodiversity surrounding them and wish uh, for the frequency of maintenance to allow for these many ecosystems to now thrive. So right now, Singapore's nature is quietly playing its part to help people through this difficult time of lockdown. Now finally, turning our gaze to the world of entertainment after reality star Kim Kardashian West sold a 20% stake in her KKW Beauty Cosmetics company to a global beauty brand. The value of her business has officially risen to $1 billion. Ever the enigma, her husband, rapper Kanye West, congratulated her achievement by posting a sweet tribute to the mother of his children, adding, so blessed this is... Uh, still life, so I made you this still life. What has people scratching their heads, of course, is the accompanying picture, which features an assortment of vegetables and flowers. While well, some have interpreted the still life to show the, the fruits of her labor, others have expressed disappointment at getting a new notification from the star, only to see him messing around with some produce. Uh, news that uh, does have his fans very excited, however, is the upcoming release of his latest album, God's country. So yesterday he dropped the official music video for his latest track, uh, Wash Us in, in the Blood, in which fellow rapper Travis Scott and his eldest daughter Northwest makes a cameo appearance and quite the vivid montage directed by Dr. Dre. It features footage of black people in the hands of police protesting, dancing and fighting off the coronavirus. So we'll watch the space very closely. But that's a wrap of your news for now. Let's get into the weather. A very good morning to you, South Africa. A good morning to you, team. We have reached the midweek. Let's start off the day um, on the right side of lockdown by having the first look at the weather this morning. But first, here are some sunrise pictures. This one is from Mulebo Khang Marumo. He says, good morning, expressive family. All the way from Northwest. What a stunning picture, Mulebo Khang. Thank you so much. Jonathan Daniel sends his greetings from Betaville, Cape Town. Cape Town's temperatures range from 12 degrees, reaching a high of 20. Thank you to both Mulebo Khang and Jonathan for your sunrise pictures. I hope that you have a fantastic morning further. Now with Cape Town full in the grip of winter, rainy days and stormy weather conditions, the past few weeks saw dams feeding the Cape Metro filling up significantly. Dam supply in Cape Town are currently on average 62% full, which is 10% higher than the same time last year. The largest dam, the Vatterskloof, is 60% full. The pictures across the province doesn't look as good as an average of 44%, up from 39% last year. But on the flip side, there are fears of from the government 
government about the shrinking water levels of the Val Dam as Gauteng province enters its dry season. The level of the Val Dam was 45.81% yesterday in comparison to some 70% last year. As always, people are encouraged and urged to continuously use water sparingly. Right now, let's get into the temperatures for the rest of the country. Sitkale Bologwane with a low of 6, reaching a high of 18. It's a partly cloudy day in Bombela at a maximum temperature of 23 and a minimum of 8. Pretoria, it's a sunny day at a maximum of 22, but starts off at 6 today. Josie Maboneng, 319 are your temperatures. It's a sunny day in Mahikeng at a maximum of 21 and a minimum of 3 degrees. Glerksdorp, 220. Kimberley, 421. Bloemfontein, 019. And Ritz Bay, your temperatures range from 13, reaching a high of 23. Peter Maritzburg, 1023 are your temperatures for the day. And Durban, South Africa's playground, starts off the day at 13, reaching a high of 23. Mtata, your low is 4 degrees, reaching a high of 25. It's London, 1225. And if you are in Cradock, your temperatures start at 3 today, reaching a high of 23. Port Elizabeth, 1026. George, 1023. And Cape Town, 1220. It's a partly cloudy day as well in Vusta at a maximum of 23 and a minimum of 7. Uh, Sutherland starts off at 0 today, reaching a high of 18. And last but not least, Uppington, your low is 4 degrees, reaching a high of 25. Now remember, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have your Ourselves a feel good kind of day, and here are some words of inspiration to continue the feel goodness. Yeah, absolutely, because in a little while we're going to be learning more about the Garden Game Ranger Challenge, which encourages all of us to become intrepid explorers in our own backyards. Oh, lovely indeed. Now we like to motivate you daily with our words of inspiration, and since we're dedicating today's show to the space in which we invest so much energy into, we're turning to British poet Alfred Austin for his words expressing the pure joy found in being in the garden. Mm -hmm. Listen to these words. The glory of gardening. Hands in the dirt, head in the sun, heart with nature. To nurture a garden is to feed not just the body, but the soul. Oh, I love that indeed, Kat. Don't you think it just speaks so much to us as human beings? We can't overcome and we can't skip any steps. We need to make sure that we are plowing that seed, investing, and I think just watering that, uh, that dream and that goal every single day, and that's how we're going to nurture our soul. Absolutely. I wish I had known this as a kid, because gardening was a chore when I was a kid. I hated it with a passion. Well, revolutionary times ahead, man. We got our gardens. <laughs> Cheers to that. There Warm up your winter with Super M by winning your share of 500,000 Rand in cash and prizes. Whether you need a morning pick-me-up, a midnight snack, or a study cram filler. Buy any Super M, follow Super M SA on Instagram or Facebook. Share your warm-up filler and tag three friends to stand a chance of winning your share of that 500,000 Rand in cash and prizes.
There we go, feel it in your bones. It's your birthday, hopefully it is your birthday and you're feeling so, so special even at this early stage. Um, and hopefully just maybe someone loves you enough to send <laughs> through a birthday message. And we've got a ton of great messages to get through, a couple of videos as well. But today it's, it's someone very special to all of us. Surely she's special. one of the coolest uh, rappers in the game, undoubtedly. Missy Elliott, everybody, oh, who turns 49 years old today. Bo -bo -bo -bo. Wow. If you don't know who she is, I mean, come on, where have you been? She's an American record producer, rapper, and philanthropist. Missy has been in the game for over 20 years, and most of you may remember her from the all-female R&B group Sister. Now, since she <laughs> launched her solo career, she has sold over 13 million records in the States. What? Happy birthday to you, Missy. I want, I'd love to know what her downloads are now. Oh. Because she, I, I would reckon, is on a different level. But um, true. Missy's cool, man. She just looks like she's got the coolest sense of humor as well about her life and work. Awesome. We love you, Missy. She's very, very nice. Now we have a video, a very special video for a ninth birthday. This one goes out to Usotandwa Pepe Eto. This one is from Ulinati Kyalana, sent by Uakona Kyalana. Let's check it out. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Swartan. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Heart's not in it, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you, I wonder what he was watching. What do you think He's was there? He's hearing some things on the TV. Ah. Yeah! Ah, oh, man. <laughs> SpongeBob. Ah, it's just, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Missing out on SpongeBob oh, for brilliant. a birthday. No, I'm kidding. Absolutely a beautiful. And now we've got another, I, I would imagine, very cute one. Happy first birthday to my sweet potato, oh. uh, Shiloh. Oh, gorgeous, man. We love you so much. That's from your mommy, your ma, pa, granny. Um, Ma and Uncle Josh, the whole fam. Happy birthday, Shiloh. And then going out to Leah, we wish our princess Leah a happy third birthday. The message reads, may God's richest blessings be upon you or upon her life as she grows. May she stay as sweet and loving as she is Aww. with many more happy birthdays ahead. And that's from Mommy, Daddy, Aunt uh, Krizel and Uncle Tyron. Happy 10th birthday to Thank Indira Siasanga Mazamisa. May you be blessed with many more years of fun, happiness and success ahead from your granny. Happy birthday to you, cutie. Carlene is also celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday to my beautiful daughter, Carleen Fisher. I wish you a day as beautiful, unique, spectacular, vibrant and special as you are. Love your mom, Christabel. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Carl. And then a happy birthday to um, Isa. May the Almighty always guide and protect you. Amen. Have an awesome day. We love you. And that's from your mom, Ma, Isi, Faroza, um, Mawiya, and Zayana. Happy birthday, Isa. Then a happy birthday to Israel, aka Izzy. May God bless you with <laughs> many more years to come. Lots of love from your mom, your dad. And Nisa Modina and your lovely sister as well. Happy birthday, Israel. Last but not least, happy fourth birthday to Cruz. Thank you for being our secret to endless happiness. Uh -huh. You fill our days with warmth and joy. We pray to God that he blesses you with good health and happiness. Lots of love from your mommy, Lindsay, and Uncle Bradley. Happy birthday to you, Cruz. Cruz, that's a cool name. Such a cool name. That's He's such a cool, cool kid. Name, man. You're a cool, <laughs> cool dude. Happy birthday to all of you. Hopefully you do have the most wonderful day. And if you'd like to send us a birthday message or a, a video, even better yet, mm. uh, please send your video to 071-640-6551. You can just WhatsApp us and then email your birthday wishes to birthdays at cordova.tv. Um, and let's catch up with our social media creative now. Um, Nangi uh, Naruka to find out how Game is celebrating a massive milestone, 50 years. You're with your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. Now listen to this, you could be loading things into your trolley without worrying about the next bill on your next shopping trip. Sound too good to be true? Well, here's the thing. Game is giving you the chance to win a trolley dish in celebration of their 50th birthday. Yes, and now we're joined by social media creative and working mother, Nangi Nuroka, who joins us on a video call to chat about, you know, that work-life balance and how exactly you can enter Game's Thrifty 50 Trolley Dish competition. Nangi, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are 
are you doing this morning? Ah, uh, we are so, so good. Thank you so much for making the time to chat to us. I know you're busy balancing motherhood, balancing a career, balancing creativity. I it's mean. a lot. Yes. I literally just got out of a meeting right now. Um, uh, and I fed my daughter this morning, got us ready. I don't know. I, I kind of try to find the balance. I don't take on too much outside of our home life. Um, sorry to my friends. Sometimes I have to miss things. And, um, I mean, I've got great support. I've got a great partner who falls in when need be. Girl, you are just serving us. Here. Like I'm just like, yes, girl, come through. But as a working mom, you know the importance of celebrating, you know, the milestones. Now, to celebrate these games is running the Thrifty 50 Trolley Dash competition. We want to know what thrifty personality did, type did you get? Uh, were you quite surprised with the results that you got? Um, I got yes, good man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, no, I was not surprised. I like nice things, but I mean, within liking nice things, I always try to find a deal somewhere, wherever I can, and say wherever I can, but I was not surprised at all. Ah, uh, fruit woman for real. Uh, now, fruit now, mom. I'm a fruit mom. Fruit mom. Okay. Fruit mom. <laughs> fruit mom for real. But listen, uh, since it's all about, uh, you know, the thrifty 50 for game, we know that you're quite uh, thrifty when it comes to all things parenting. Please, I need you to share with us some of your thrifty tips in this department because we know it can be very costly and how it's been helpful for you over the lockdown period. A lot of people have been complaining about the escalating costs. Yeah, so I recycle a lot. So I hoard a lot of things and I keep them. Um, and it's been working out pretty well for lockdown, especially when it comes to like keeping my daughter busy. Um, and I'm also I'm a very avid gardener. So like where I couldn't find supplies, I used... Um, the stuff that I recycled, like, like plastic containers and things like that. So, like, I keep everything. I, I, I don't throw away things for the environment and also just to use, like, um, later on in life. Nangi, those hands don't look like gardening hands. <laughs> are you are you sure you do the gardening <laughs> yourself, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> Some green fingers there. But, of course, Nangi, yes. everyone has a game store memory. We were speaking about ours the entire day. But maybe you can share with us your favourite memory of game over the years and why this stands out for you so much. I think my earliest and actually the one that kind of, like, tags at my heartstrings is... Um, when I started up my little family and we moved into our um, first small apartment and um, I mean I was excited to decorate and you know get going and the first place we went to was to game to to buy ourselves our first fridge ever um, and we went together as a family and that's like the one thing that I'll always remember about about game because that fridge like um, helped us through like a lot like it it it, it, it stood the, the test of time so um, that's like one of my first favorite memories Sure, and there's lots of yeah. fun memories. I think that the thing about game is being there through different milestones. I was saying just the other day from when you are kitting out your first apartment or when you start yes. varsity and you're getting your stationery or when it's the end of the month and you have to do that bulk grocery shopping. There's a lot. Okay, so but lastly, if you won the Thrifty 50 Trolley Dash, okay, what would be some of the first items that you'd be throwing into your trolley and, and why those items? Okay, two things. So, um, the kids are going back to school soon. I think next month. I mean, everyone's nervous about that, but okay, it has to happen at some point. Um, I'll definitely get um, school supplies uh, because we are out at the moment. And then secondly, I'm kind of redecorating my patio outside my balcony outside. So I'd get like a lot of patio furniture um, to kind of make my space and my little... Um, Oasis outside to look perfect. And that's basically the things that I want right now. Again, I want to say that she doesn't look like someone that's going to be getting down and dirty, <laughs> but Nangi, we believe you. <laughs> We feel you, okay? We don't know if it's true. Maybe you'll have to send some more pictures of you actually doing the work, okay? Please go check my, my Instagram page. You're going to see the green finger in me. Yes, Wait for it. I'm going to be checking the Instagram <laughs> account shortly. Well, Nangi Noruka, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Social media, content creator, green fingers of the gal is everything. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And you forgot one extra title there, Khrut Mom. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, Nangi. <laughs> now, to enter the Thrifty 50 Trolley Dash competition, go onto Game's Facebook page and complete the 50 Thrifty personality quiz. It's so much fun. And once you've completed the quiz, all you have to do is share it onto your Facebook, your Instagram, or your Twitter page with the hashtags, hashtag BDayGodGame and hashtag Thrifty50. T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com. And this competition will run until the 10th of July, 2020. And remember, if you're in a game store from the 24th of June to the 14th, of July and spend 250 Rand or more, you can fill in your details on your till slip and drop it in the competition box in store to stand the chance to win a share of 1 million Rand in game vouchers daily. Now, game store opening hours are Monday to Friday from 9 to 6, and you can catch them Saturdays from 9 to 5, Sundays, uh, and public holidays from 9 in the morning till 4 p.m. Happy shopping. <laughs> It's my feel-good breakfast show. This is your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso, on SABC3. Now, just when you thought that people were running out of ideas and interesting ways of keeping themselves preoccupied during the lockdown, Jason McCall, a professional photographer, started a photography challenge on Facebook called the Garden Game Ranger Challenge, where he and other like-minded nature lovers are appreciating the strangest-looking creatures and critters all found in their gardens. Now, the community has now grown to over 5,000 participants reaching the United States and the UK. And Jason joins us to tell us a bit more about this initiative. Jason, it's great to have you with us this morning. Thanks for making the time to chat. Thank you so much for uh, giving me some time to chat to you both. Um, I'm big fans of the show, and of course, uh, this is something close to my heart, so I'm very, very happy at the moment. Please tell us more, Jason, about the, you know, Garden Game Ranger Challenge, what it's all about, and what inspired the idea. Sure, so as many South Africans were doing those virtual runs around the gardens during the heavy stages of, of lockdown level five, uh, I was running and uh, it, a thought crossed my mind that in my garden, which I have quite a few trees and, and species of different bugs, bees, birds, you name it, I thought, why don't I start sharing what I'm finding in my garden? Mm. I, I am very passionate about wildlife. Uh, I love photography. And I also think that because just because we were in lockdown and we were at home, it wasn't a jail cell. For those of us who are fortunate enough and lucky enough 
to have some kind of green in our backyard. There's a whole world around around us, and it was it was a way for us to just be distracted from this constant news of of of, of COVID. And and as important as it was, it can get a bit much. So it was a bit of a, a way to escape in a positive way. And of course get involved with nature and wildlife. Yeah, and you've managed to grow uh, successfully a community of people around you that uh, feel the same way and have found comfort in what you do. So how exactly does it work? I mean, do people have to request access? And, you know, what are the rules in being part of this Garden Game Ranger Challenge? Okay, so it's pretty simple. You just request access. I have to have an access protocol because people just join for other um, w w reasons because it's growing quite quickly now. It's got to be in your backyard. So we try and keep that access point going. And it's simply a case of join up, you get accepted, and then you start posting your funds. And and by posting funds, I mean you found a, a shongololo in your washing, <laughs> or a, a pigeon on your on your on your stoop, or maybe there's like a, a snake, which you're getting a lot of those that comes across your path. You, you take a picture if it's safe, and then post it up, and the conversation starts, and you become a game ranger. And wow. it's gone. It's literally gone from. It started with a few friends. Now it's in 70 countries, wow. and we're seeing things that the average person really wouldn't see in South Africa, but it's all backyards. That's so awesome. I'm the kind of person, if I see a shongololo anywhere near me or a snake, I'm not about to take a phone out, Jason, and capture, you know, an image for it. But I but get now what you... you get like 10,000 likes for it, so why not? Exactly. <laughs> Just on that, mm. people who have fears, like shongololos, uh, snakes and that, they, they will see a post and they'll start by being quite nervous and saying, oh, you know, I'd never. But after a conversation with other people, they end up going, geez, I actually... I want to go and see if I can find one. So mm. it dispels myths, mm. misconceptions, mm. and creates this common, like, positive pattern for, for wildlife. And Shongololo is awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about that one. You've just mentioned that you have you have grown to over 5,000 participants um, in the group. And I understand that they are from all over the world, from KZN to Kenya, the US, and the UK. The funny thing is, it, it did start very much uh, as, as local KZN Durban sort of uh, thing, and then it just expanded, and someone from Cape Town posted. Mm. Then I had Polokwane uh, rocked up into the scene, and then it just spread, and Africa grew. And I, I love the fact that Africa was, um, the, the, there was like a heartbeat of just posting of just uh, incredible spots. Mozambique stood up, mm. and then it, it sort of went north, and, and Kenya came, and then uh, it's sort of hitting the sort of the top of Africa, and then all of a sudden the rest of the world uh, opened up. And I'm glad Africa. And South Africa led the, the sort of charge on it. But let me tell you, from Australia to Oman and um, Philippines, uh, we've got America. Yeah, as I said, 70 countries. I think it's 22 now that are, that are part of it. Yeah. Well, we'll be chatting more about uh, your participants in the group a bit later on. But tell us a bit uh, about some of the most interesting creatures and critters that you've seen posted um, on the group today. So there's a guy who lives near Kruger Park. He lives his, his, his backyard literally faces Kruger Park. And he had a leopard kill right on the fence. So I've never wow. seen a leopard in a park. So for him to see it in his backyard, wow. from his backyard, was amazing. There was a caracal in water. A caracal is like a really large cat. Um, it's a very beautiful feline. And it's just strolled across someone's yard in, in waterfall. We've had a, a bird that's very rare. It's, it's not even seen in South Africa. It's, it's on the Caprivi Strip. And it's sort of Zambia and that. It's... It was found in Mplunga. It's called the Rosses Strika. It's a beautiful bird, but it's not from around this part of the world. So there's a fair population that a guy spotted in, in, in Mplunga, uh, just outside Mplunga. And then um, we've had snakes. Uh, the, the amount of snakes that have come out, obviously people are um, sometimes a little bit hesitant about it, mm. but the variety of snakes that have come through have been incredible. I'm a bit of a birder. Um, as a species lover, I think birds take the, the cake. And we've seen the amount of bird species we've seen it being healthy. There was a, a, a pair of uh, crown cranes that landed in someone's yard that hadn't been in the area for th over 38 years. Wow. Just unbelievable. That's incredible. Kat, what do you do when you walk out and you see a leopard just chilling over your fence? <laughs> <laughs> it's I think, dead. I think oh, the, the words, mummy, <laughs> come up somewhere there. Uh, Jason, great chatting to you, but do stay with us and you too at home because we'll be chatting to one of the group's participants, Warren Dick, who's taken some snaps from some very interesting creatures. Uh, that a little bit later on.
Oh, Jason, that is just absolutely incredible. I can't even imagine what I would do if I would see a bloody like a hippo lying outside my garden. But before we get cooking, we know that there are a lot of people without food on their tables. And at this very difficult time, we are so thankful that Woolies have partnered with the gift of the givers to distribute food care packs to those families in need. And of course, as you've seen on the show, for as little as 10 Rand a day, you can provide one person with three meals for the entire day. And all you have to do is scan the QR code on your screen using the SnapScan app or your banking app on your phone and donate today to whatever amount you can afford towards filling that bag full of love, goodness and an entire day of food and every little bit will make a difference. Now, some days of course we love cooking from scratch and other days I just couldn't care less to be honest and I don't feel like cooking but Chef Clem is showing us all that we don't have to worry too much about it by making a mouth watering crispy chicken schnitzel schnitzel sorry with golden sheet potatoes smothered in herb butter oh music to my ears it's delicious and it's the easiest lunch you will make in a while Chef Clem mm -hmm. oh it's like music to my ears when I did, oh. we made we had schnitzels I think it was on Monday mm -hmm. and the viewers went crazy they were like you know this is actually an ingredient we always 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 have in our freezer and it's weird it's on promo now on daily difference and i've gotten so many inspiration from like viewers like what they serve their schnitzels with yeah and i was like wow this is almost like a national food schnitzel <laughs> people are like obsessed with schnitzels and there's so, so much that can go with it but Clem, i have no idea what a sheet potato is it something you put in the bed before the duvet absolutely <laughs> after you rest and you put it down but you know we like to be fancy as chefs we call things like names just to sound amazing you know what i mean bourgeois. exactly sheet potatoes Chips. <laughs> chips. That's what it is. That's what it is. But a good chip is great, but when you show it a lot of love, it becomes something like really, really special. So let's talk about this. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get your potato ready. The schnitzels are done. I mean, you, it goes into the oven. I don't know what more I can say about it. It's delicious. It's great. 20 minutes later, you're eating. So the sheet potatoes are great, like, outside, like veggie side to go with it. Okay. And you can do butternut, you can do pumpkin, you can do sweet potato, but the crispiness, you, you can't get that in like the other veggies. Yeah. You get that from a potato. Yes. So we're loving potatoes right now. I'm using the everyday potato. You can use a mandolin, but let me just show you if you're at home right now. Uh, whoa, 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 hang on. What's a mandolin, bruh? A mandolin, it's like a little, it's a little ninja slice over here. Okay. They're actually not that expensive. And the good thing is like once you buy it, it lives in your house forever. Okay. And you use it so often. I swear, you use it, you like actually wonder, what were you doing without this thing before? What life have I been living all this exactly. time? Exactly. But <laughs> if you don't, to. yeah, if you don't <laughs> have one, like you don't right now, I'm gonna teach you how to get those like, like thin, thin, thin slices of potato. Okay. So you get your potato and you cut a little tiny piece of the base, okay? And the reason we do that is because a potato's round, mm. and while you're slicing, you wanna kind of keep whatever you're slicing as stable as possible. If things are wobbling around, you're gonna slip, you're gonna cut yourself. Yes. So if you cut a little piece of the bottom, you've got a, a nice base. That guy's not going anywhere, okay. okay? So then what you do is, sharp, sharp, sharp knife. A blunt knife is more dangerous than a sharp knife because you're putting more force on the knife to actually cut through something. Whereas if you have a sharp knife, the knife does the work. Ah, okay. okay, so you do your little tiger claw, yeah. Okay, and that's, you gotta tuck your fingers in and you got this little flat surface on your oh, just yes, past your yes, knuckles yes. and that's the guide for your knife. You, with your fingers being tucked in, you can't cut your fingers. Oh, but so watch scary, someone man. out there, watch <laughs> someone out there. But just try this, okay? Tiger claw, get a good grip on your potato. Start off slow as well, guys, please. please very, please. very slow. Once you get the motion of the ocean, you can go faster, but start off slow. Say, cool, get your fingers tucked in, rest the knife on like the flat part following your knuckle and just, Start, start off slow, and eventually you get used to it. You can go a little faster, and then that's all you gotta do. Oh, Clem, can you feel the suspense in the room right that's now? That's the quietest it's ever been in this kitchen. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. Everybody's just like, oh, don't cut, don't cut, don't cut, don't cut. <laughs> but yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful thin slice of potato. So what you do with this now, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pop it down on your, on your baking sheet. Oh, but you want to, you want to see me use this guy, don't you? I don't know okay, what it is. Okay, let me put this aside. Show these tricks and trades of the Yeah, of the these, these are really great. I mean, especially when it comes to like slicing onions, mm -hmm. this guy's like, it's done in like record, record time. So just get it. It's really great. Okay, cool. <laughs> so it normally comes with a guard. You right. put the guard over the thing okay. and then you just hoi. Okay, oh, I'm, like I'm, a, I'm gonna do it like without a the, yeah. kind of a vibe. Exactly, oh, I'm gonna do it without okay. the guard now so you can see what it's all about. And you can also adjust these little like slices to different like, Thicknesses. Okay. So yeah, so you just go. 
I definitely just, saves time in the kitchen. You just churned out like 16 of these things in the time that you did one of these. So I think I'm For definitely sure. going to yeah. start incorporating this into my lifestyle. That the, is a time saver. And uh, it's a time man. saver. But what I also like about this is it like makes one potato go so far. Like I literally haven't even used half of this potato and that's how many slices I've got already. You almost like fold the entire tray. For sure. Yeah. So what you're going to do now, salt and pepper, a little bit of olive oil. Well, actually first toss these in salt and pepper and olive oil, put it on the tray, goes into the oven and it comes out looking beautiful like this. How, I mean, these are amazing. And uh, uh, can you guys... I've got to get some of that crunch, Clem. Oh, that sounds good. Mm. And by the way, this tray was really full before the segment started. Something happened. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Clem, how long does that take in total once it's in the oven? About 20 minutes, not even. Oh, wow, um, so that and the schnitzel together, quick, quick, quick. 20 minutes done. Talking about the schnitzel, let me get it out of the oven. And yeah, I mean, it was really great. We're saving time, we're saving money because we're buying from Daily Difference. Mm -hmm. And we know how much we can save when we buy from Daily Difference every week. Check out the specials. It's that easy, like how to get dinner on the table in the middle of the week. It's, it's so quick. It's, it's crazy how the daily difference is actually dictating to my meals right now. When I see something on special, I immediately change exactly. my plan. I was like, I was gonna go for spaghetti, but no. steaks on special, ah, you win. It's, it's such a big difference, and it, it really is making, exactly. uh, making a difference in my budget on the week as well. Gives so, me the opportunity save, to actually give back, to give to the givers and fill a bag. It's been oh, huge. Brilliant. It's been huge. Brilliant so, idea, guys. Chef Clem giving you that words of wisdom. Everything that you're saving in the week, obviously from your daily difference, why not donate that over to the donate and, and make, a, make a difference out it's there. It's a huge difference. Okay. Some point, 10 Rand and more is anything that you need to make that donation. So make it count, guys. You're making lots of savings this week. I know you're loving it. And of course, the belly is happy nonetheless from all these savings, especially when you're cooking up something like this, Clem. 20 minutes yeah, done. Absolutely. A quick little herb butter, some butter, some garlic, some coriander, some chili. Mix it all together, you get this beautiful butter over here. Mm. When the schnitzel comes out the oven, drop a little bit of butter on there, it starts melting with your chips, with a bit of tomato sauce. Voila, there yeah. you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want some more of this recipe inspiration or any of the ingredients or any inspiration whatsoever, head over to EspressoShow.com for this lunch infusion. It's sheet potatoes with chicken schnitzel and it looks like it's just come straight from the restaurant. Yes. Enjoy your lunch, guys. I know I definitely will be. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Mm.
You are still locked into your Feel Good Breakfast show, Expresso, right here on SABC3. Now, earlier on um, in the show, we spoke to Jason McCall, a professional photographer who started a photography challenge on Facebook called the Garden Game Ranger Challenge, where nature lovers across the world have been taking pictures of interesting creatures found in their gardens during the lockdown. Now, we're joined by one of the group's participants, Warren Dick. Warren, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I feel like this conversation is about to get spicier and more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, Warren, you're a professional photographer, as I understand, and uh, even though the Garden Game Ranger Challenge uh, was meant as a fun project, you and many other participants have actually taken it quite seriously, posting some amazing photos of some of the really strange creatures you found. So, what made you want to get involved in this? Yes, well, I've been into insects and all kinds of creepy crawlies in the garden ever since I was a small boy. And when I got my first digital SLR camera, um, I then just met the two passions together for photography as well as for the small creatures. Mm -hmm. um, I've been posting stuff on Facebook now for many years about the small creatures I find in my garden, hopefully to help uh, as well dispel fears that many people have around things like snakes and spiders and also to make people curious about what is in their own garden in many or go out to uh, uh, these big game parks looking for the big five mm. and then forget about the small creatures that they've got in their own garden. They don't even know what lives in their own backyard. Mm. That's true, actually, um, Warren. There are three creatures that you've taken photos of in the challenge that you'll be telling us about. The ghost mantis, spiny flower mantis nymph, and the Durban dwarf burrowing skink. Let's start with the ghost mantis. How common or uncommon is it? And tell us more about its unique look. Hi. The ghost mantis is actually quite common throughout most of Africa. Mm. However, as you probably see by the pictures that I've taken, people very seldomly see them. The camouflage makes them look exactly like a, a dead leaf on a plant. Mm. And unless you actually go and examine the plants and all the dead leaves, you probably wouldn't see it there. They also have a unique uh, self-defense mechanism. If you do spot them on a plant, they'll just drop to the ground like a dead leaf and remain motionless, so you wouldn't even know that it was there to start off with. You know, Warren, it's truly amazing to see what you photographed, and even, you know, I think people need to take a bit more time to look at these beautiful creatures, how unique they are, how beautiful they are, if you have to imagine what happened on an evolutionary scale or a creation scale to come to this result. And so I want to hear a bit more about the spiny flower mantis nymph that you photographed. Yeah, to me, they're probably one of the most unique creatures I've ever seen in my life. I've been looking at observing them in my own garden as well as a local nature reserve for some eight or nine years now, and I just never get tired of seeing them. Um, I remember as a kid, I used to go to the library and get books out of the library and saw these amazing creatures in a book, and I thought, wow, I'd love to go to a tropical rainforest where these things exist to photograph them one day. Little did I know that they actually lived in my own backyard garden. Yeah, yeah they actually able to adapt their color to the plant as the seasons change. And obviously the plant that they're on changes color, they can change their color to adapt as well. Oh. Funny enough, they live in the exact same place within one square meter of where they were hatched for their entire life until they get their wings and they fly off and look for a mate. Oh, so they're not much of explorers. They've been on lockdown before we were on lockdown. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Warren, then there's the Durban dwarf burrowing skink, which is apparently endangered. Yes, I'm so fortunate to have these critically endangered reptiles in my own garden. Um, many people, when they discover them in their garden, they actually think they're a snake because they've actually got no lim limbs whatsoever. Um, it's actually a species of lizard, uh, but uh, they don't have legs. That's how they were created without legs. They live pretty much under the ground where they feed on small insects. And I particularly love people's compost heaps. And unfortunately, the bluff area of Durban is probably the only place left on Earth where these incredible little creatures can be found. Mm. And most of the places where they can be found is in people's own back gardens on the bluff. 
Wow, that's absolutely incredible. I mean, this has been an education, to say the least. Yes. Warren, thank you so much for uh, giving us a tour of your back garden in some sort of way. We really appreciate it. Okay, cool. Thanks so much. We certainly do appreciate uh, his time and uh, finding out more about these interesting creatures uh, that he's taken pictures of in his garden. And uh, I, th I think it opens up a doorway to a whole new world of fascination yes. and entertainment and intrigue uh, that you can find yourself exploring during this lockdown. So check out that Garden Game Ranger challenge. Perhaps there's a Garden Game Ranger in you. Oh, well, it's all about Ooh. all of these interesting things that we find in our gardens. Like right in your right own back garden, in man. So you don't have to be yard. a professional photographer to join the, the Home Garden uh, Game Ranger Challenge. Just go and do a search, check out what you can find in your own garden. If you do have a camera, snap some pics. We'd love to see it. I bet you there's, mm -hmm. there is a, a, a new species waiting to be discovered right yeah. under your nose. But and of plants as well. And of plants, fact, yeah. I think that uh, when the lockdown started, a lot of people did set out uh, to start gardens, to, you know, venture into... I Landscape gardening man. and landscape. Uh, landscape. And all of that. Did you also do that? And I got into have been it, so inspired. Uh, so we're asking you to show us your home and garden project that you've started since lockdown. Uh, and I know how, how proud people can be about or get around these sorts of things. So let's take a look. Uh, yes, uh, Cinder Seaware saying, um, "Good morning, team. Yo, it's cold outside. I want to show more." <laughs> Please read that again. Very cute. Yo, <laughs> it's cold outside. I want to show more. It is. It's freezing, man. No Norma Parker Perenzi saying, started with green peppers and proud of myself. Oh, oh look at look this at that. little nice. pepper. Look it's a little that. baby pepper. It's coming. Edwina uh, Hartland Dutoy says, Javi's work. He's also planted broccoli, cabbage, and lettuce, but the cauliflower is blooming. Take Lovely. a look at that. Ooh, oh, and then we've got another garden. one from that's Elias a Rano. Garden saying, I'm right a there. beginner gardener, and when the lockdown started, I could not believe I created a garden of my own for my family survival. And uh, uh, I'm doing this. I'm always happy, even if tired, and my hands are running low. Uh, <laughs> too bad. No juice. Cuts, and of course, uh, those land lifts. Uh, now my plants are beautiful and protected from the neighbors' chickens and dogs. <laughs> Oh, well he has done. toiled by the sounds of it. You have toiled, man. <laughs> um, Elias, congratulations. Well done. I love the fact that people literally are feeding their families yeah. with the produce that they're creating that. in their own home gardens. So well done. Keep posting pictures. Keep letting us know how you are bringing um, that special garden flair into your own world and life. Are you tired of conference calls, connectivity problems, and need to go on site or be in the boardroom? Well, Mango are soaring the skies once again. As we navigate through this new normal, businesses need to recover, and Mango cares about business. For affordable and reliable business and essential travel, visit www.flymango.com. Go discover more. Go Mango. Book now. Terms and conditions apply. It's my feel-good breakfast show.
COVID-19 has undoubtedly changed life as we know it. Now, the pandemic has affected people worldwide and it has had a massive effect on the financial as well as the property markets as well. Now, this morning, legal specialist and director at London Attorneys, Junior Sizumo, joins us via video call to talk to us about the impact of COVID-19 on the buying and the selling of property in the country. Junior, good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning, Tabiso. Thank you for having me. Ah, oh, Junia, the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's talk about the impact that it's had on the selling and buying of property in South Africa. Okay, so the impact that this has had on the selling and buying of property, um, so the deeds offices have actually been uh, not operating and have been closed. So this has actually caused quite a huge delay in terms of the transfer of properties. And another thing is that, you know, obviously people at the moment um, are going through uh, different positions in terms of, you know, financially. So people are currently not either unemployed or they, um, their salaries are cut or there's a restructure in the companies and, and, and so forth. So actually banks are also, you know, obviously reviewing their loans and they may actually revoke the loans um, um, as, as per the crisis at hand, yeah. It sounds like such a tricky place to find yourself in if you were in the buying process. But what happens then if a buyer finds themselves in a situation where the occupancy period or the occupancy date happens to be during the lockdown? So during the level four and the regulations, people could actually um, move from the 7th um, of May to the 7th of June because there was actually a window period that the regulations allowed for people to actually move houses. But... Uh, level three that will not be really an issue as much uh, so there's new regulations that actually attend to level three and people will be actually be able to move houses during that period as long as one has an affidavit which is signed and commissioned by a commission of votes the rental market has also been affected by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, what are some of the main challenges here so the rental market has obviously been affected. Um, again, we go back to the fact that during this crisis, people are currently unemployed, people are getting salary cuts, people are finding it really hard to actually um, pay for their rent. But of course, some rental agreements have the force majeure clause, which actually exempts people from them paying um, during this, this, this period. And what rights then, then does a tenant have whose lease may be coming to an end uh, in terms of an extension, can a landlord simply evict them because the lease has come to an end and say, well, listen, it's not my problem that we're in lockdown? Um, not really. Um, so main, the main thing with lease agreements, usually they have uh, renewal clauses. So there is a renewal clause and there's a notice period in those clauses where um, landlords can actually offer the tenants to renew the, the agreement. So it, it is actually up to the tenant whether they actually want to pursue a renewal or not. So that's that's a contractual obligation that would be entered into between the, the two parties, between the tenant and, 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 the, and the landlord. Mm -hmm. Again, when it comes to evictions, um, during this period, people are actually not, it's actually prohibited for people to actually be evicted. Um, however, if there are circumstances where um, the landlord would approach um, a court due to um, an eviction um, by process, then that eviction order can only um, come into fruition after level three. So people can only be evicted um, after level three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Junior, yeah. this is a serious one here. A lot of people have lost their jobs and certainly a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs as well. There'll be lots of salary cuts as well. What should these people be doing in order to not find themselves on the streets? So my, my recommendation is I don't recommend anyone to, you know, just stop paying their rental, their rental um, uh, fees um, without any, you know, communication to the landlord. I definitely advise people or tenants to actually communicate to the landlords and actually express the situation that they're currently in. If they are unable to make certain payments, um, then they can come into you know further agreements in terms of you know how to handle the, the crisis you know going forward. So they can come into like a, a payment plan of sort um, to 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 manage the situation going forward. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like certainly going back to the contract and going back to that negotiation space between landlord and tenant 
is the best place to go to. Um, Junior, yeah. any resources for consumers during this time? Should they be uh, finding themselves stuck or in a bit of a pickle? What resources are there? Yeah, so I definitely, my first point of call would definitely be to encourage tenants and landlords to actually come into amicable agreements um, outside of any court process first as a first, you know, first encounter. Mm -hmm. And then should that not work out, um, I definitely think that one should then go for legal advice and obviously um, access to, to courts as well. Thank yeah. you so much, Junior Sidzuma, for uh, making time to chat to us this morning the law around COVID-19, the buying, the selling of property, as well as the rentals thereof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that was such an insightful conversation with legal specialist and director at London Attorneys, Junior Sidzumo. Thank you so much for joining us once again right here on Expresso Show. I'm sure that your knowledge on this topic, Junior, has helped many South Africans who were unsure about what to do when it comes to buying and selling property during these very, very uncertain times. Oh, well, thank you for that advice, Tubbs and Junior. That was incredible. And now, of course, the fact that we are clued up on renting and buying a home, what about this idea? Why not turn your home into your own gym using your very own furniture that you have right here in the living space? And we're going to be bringing you a creative workout using th some of the things around the house and, of course, your own body. So grab a chair, grab a couch, and, of course, grab a... Uh, well, not a tablet, actually. We're going to be using these pillows as well, okay. Jamie. Are you ready for today's session? I am. I like that it's the in, com in the convenience of your own home and yeah. I don't have to go to a gym. So, yeah, I'm ready for it. All right, so we're doing something fun, of course, today, guys. We've got our table, which is our dining room table. If you don't have a table, replace it with a chair if you want to or anything that's kind of sturdy. Uh, but the base of these exercises are going to involve our pillow, which is going to be for our medial line and for our core control. And then, of course, myself and Jamie are going to be showing you guys two options on these exercises. Exercises. So it's great that if you're just starting out in the gymming world, what you can do is copy Jamie's exercises and follow her routine. Or if you want to step it up a little bit and make it more advanced, then check out what I'm doing and I'm going to be stepping up all these exercises. So you can do it as a part and work out his or hers or join the get the whole family involved. You have no excuse whatsoever. Jamie, you ready? Yes, I need a, a use, but it's fine. I'm going to use it for the day. <laughs> all right, guys. So what we're going to be starting off with is a Bulgarian split squat. It's a split lunge. So you're going to start off by once again making sure either that that the couch is not too clean because mom's going to be quite upset. You're going to get your feet on the couch for this one, so it's going to be a little bit dirty. And then your front legs are going to be just in front of the couch and making sure that when we're going down into a squat, hinging at the hip once again and getting that glute to go back towards the couch. But here's where the interesting part comes in. We're going to keep these pillows right above our head and we're going to keep squeezing into that pillow. So this is going to work on increasing the, the, necess the necessity of our core in this workout as well as our stabilizers, all right? So let's go down for a rip all the way down beautiful form Jamie and then straight up I'm gonna just move a little bit further forward all the way back down and straight up and I want you guys I can to keep feel nice it already tall. you're gonna feel it in the glutes you're gonna feel those legs burning Jamie how's it going on your side Ooh, feeling the abs like the abs where it should be abs but I can feel it already. <laughs> <laughs> lovely so if you guys are looking for that extra challenge on this workout then don't fret I'm going to be doing what's called a Bulgarian split squat but I'm gonna include a jump as well so this gets the tempo increased as well and it involves a little bit of surety and confidence in your movement so make sure you get this right so as I come down I'm jumping up onto the table and I'm using using my explosive power to get on the table and then eccentrically load that once again and then come straight back up, right? So you guys will either go for 10 reps like Jamie Lee Domberg does over here or you're going to co copy my routine. We can show <laughs> <laughs> You can copy my routine. It's going to get you that extra calorie burner and you literally want to get straight up onto the step. This is something that I've incorporated into sprinting as well. So it's an exceptional exercise to get that explosive power, that strength and just cut and define those muscles. Moving over to the core now, exercise number two and this is going to be an interesting one. It's a side plank but we're making it a bit um, a bit more bearable. So a lot of guys have issues with their elbows, so the couch is really going to support your weight there. And as you can see, Jamie on the ground here, doing the graded version, and she's simply working those obliques, going down onto the ground, straight back up into the you air. You push-up, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful form. What I'm going to be doing over, over here, this side, if you guys want to make it extra challenging, I've got my feet on the table, going down all the way, stretching out that hip flexor and that glute, and then coming straight back up. Sorry, not the hip flexor, the oblique. And then making sure I'm coming down eccentrically 
and then rising straight back up once again. You're gonna feel it in that oblique. You're gonna feel it in your claw. And of course, you've got your shoulders stabilizing you the entire way. How's the feeling over there, Jamie? I am burning on my sides, <laughs> like, woo. It's crazy, it's wow. such a tight pinch in the side of your body. So you guys at home are only going to love this one. We're moving over to the upper body now. We're getting the arms. Let's sit back on the couch, Jamie Lee Domberg. <laughs> what we're gonna be doing, tricep dips, it works the shoulders love this. amazingly. So this is exercise number three again. 10 reps for each of these, okay? So and I also feel like um, with tricep dips, mm -hmm. or just triceps in general, a lot of people don't do a lot of exercise for this, so this is a perfect way for you to incorporate this into your everyday workout yeah. to get that strong arms and make sure that you're looking lean if you want to wear those tank tops for summer. You know, it's so easy as well. I mean, we're literally watching Tilly on the couch or chilling, just finished our tea, straight into our exercises. Bang. There we go. <laughs> Assume the position. All right, so guys, what you're gonna do now, make sure that your elbows are facing behind the body, all right? I don't wanna see them flaring out to the side, and you wanna go down as low as you can to the ground, feel those triceps and those pecs, and then push straight back up into a lock. Lovely stuff, Jamie, and then straight back down, all the way up to the lock. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my legs on the table. That's gonna cool. increase gravity, increase the resistance, and increase the tension on my triceps. So going all the way down once again, nice and low, and then straight back up to the ground. Challenge yourself and see if you can get your buttocks to reach all the way to the floor and then straight back up and that's going to give you one incredible burner. How's those arms feeling? And here's the other thing. What I find is that if you squeeze going down and you're also working, you know, this area. Yes. So it gives you a nice little shape. Look at Jamie Lee Dombek. Tips of the day. <laughs> Impressive indeed, guys. And we're going to finish this off with a lovely cardio workout. So we did the legs, we did the upper body and we did the core. So now let's get that fat burning on. So Jamie and I are going to use something sturdy again. You guys at home can use a table, use a chair, anything that's not going to allow you to fall over when you stand up on. And what we're doing here is called a step up. So we're really simulating that movement and that drive. And it's almost like hiking in your lounge. You don't need a mountain whatsoever. And you're just going to go for step ups. 30 seconds straight, one at a time, social distancing at its best and rotating and making sure that you're getting nice and tall on each movement. Lift those legs up to 90 degrees. You're going to feel those calves work. You're going to feel the arms come into play and after every single round we're gonna go for four rounds in total you're gonna finish off with these brilliant step ups that's gonna be your cardio blaster and get you shredded in winter. Jamie, how are we doing over there? I'm doing it, yay, yay. <laughs> I'm living my best life. All right, guys, enjoy this workout. It's a full body session, as quick as that. You don't need to go anywhere. Grab a pillow, get us on Facebook Live, and we'll be showing you this entire workout once again that you guys can go through. But otherwise, have an incredible day. See you later. <laughs> 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 It's my feel-good breakfast show. Ah, 
Now, welcome back. You're live with Expresso. Thank you so much for keeping it locked. Yes, it's been a garden and home inspired show today. We've had yep. a lot of fun with that. Um, but also a common thread throughout all of our content this week and every week since lockdown has been how we can make a difference, how we can give back. And after uh, being inspired by a member of our very own social media team, Jordan Tui, also sang like an absolute superstar mm -hmm. for our Tuesday tunes. Um, her donation along with Little Miles there. Um, we are happy to announce that our um, internal crew challenge has now grown into an espresso family challenge and an extended version and we have a very special donation from Erin Tui in Pretoria, oh. espresso fan and cousin of Jordan who has taken up the call to action and decided to make a contribution of her own. Take a look. Okay, so give me an app. You are best. I'm going to donate 100 rand. <laughs> <laughs> and the code. And I will also be donating a hundred rand towards this. If I can, you can too. <laughs> That's super. That's that was absolutely really, really cool, awesome. Man. Wow, thank you very, very much for that, Aaron. Wow, it's really humbling, humbling to see how people have embraced the challenge mm. and are still able to inspire those around us to partake in it. So far, Willies have managed to raise an incredible 987,048 wow. rand. Thanks to your collective effort. Thank you very much, South Africa! Wow, let's get across the line today, man. Let's get across that million yeah. mark today. And we will. I'm sure we will. And this means that 1,592 bags have been donated, which amounts to 334,592 meals that have been delivered out wow. of that one million meals goal. Um, a huge expresso shout out to Erin to for accepting the challenge and for showing us how easily and effectively sure. one can help and become part of the daily difference. And of course, now the challenge is for you to do the same. <laughs> Oh, and we can all play a part. It actually warms my heart, Clem, seeing everybody really step up and take on this challenge to help uh, these many South Africans out there. One million meals, that's the target bullies and the gift of the givers has set. And I think we can do it. We're getting pretty close. Well done, everybody who has donated. And I encourage you, if you haven't, to do so right now. But if there is one cake you should be baking this winter to enjoy with a hot cup of some, something, it's a citrus and yogurt cake with clem and gold icing. It's absolutely spectacular. You'll see why. It's delicious. It's bound to bring out the zest in your day. So uh, I think get yourself ready because Chef Clem is about to take you and I on a zesty baking ride. Yo, Clem. You're saying the way to your... Eh, eh. Oh. You don't mention that on the television. Well, basically what he was trying to say, the way to his heart is through food, and especially cake. Cake, especially. Okay. Wow, okay, Summary. Cool. You already have got my full attention. Yes. Uh, you know, you mentioned cake, and I'm like, yes. Ears open, eyes wide open. What are we making? Okay, so you know, not click on I say, every day is a reason to... Eat cake? Oh, we celebrate! celebrate! Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Well, eat cake too. And eat, eat cake. cake and then you yeah, celebrate. We exactly. celebrate by eating cake. So it's the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. You need something to like lift your spirit, mm -hmm. to like help you get through it. Yeah. It's a new month. Yeah. What it happened is. to June? What it happened is. to June? <gasps> June's it, gone. It's just gone. We're literally halfway through the year 2020. Can I you know. believe? Can you cope with that? I actually can't. Yeah, I also can't. I mean, the ink isn't even dry on my like New Year's resolutions. It's we in July. I haven't even wow. covered my New Year's resolution book yet. One of them was to come back to Expresso and spend my days with Aww. the beautiful people. And, and then boom, here. I'm back. And you're here. And Look at you're that. Here. Look at that. Put by it out in the universe. Popular demand. By popular demand. Okay. okay, cool. Let's get into it. So, Clem and Gold cake. What are we making? Yes. Okay, Clem and Gold are in season right now. Yes. It's the juiciest, the most delicious, the best you're going to get them right now. It's exclusive to Woolies. Yeah. You have to, have to get them. Mm -hmm. You've seen us use it in savory dishes, other sweet dishes, yeah. but it works really well in a cake. Graham was saying he loves citrus desserts. Yes. So, this one is for Graham. Yeah. So, Make it, it's so easy, you oh, can have a slice. I mean, look at him, you can see he wants it. He wants, he wants to that have cake. some of this. He wants in, and Absolutely. cat as well. But he acts like he doesn't want, but we know he wants. He wants it, he wants He's already it. chewing his own tongue because he wants to <laughs> eat this cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love okay, it, cool. I love so it. So what is that you're getting okay. in? Is that this clement gold going into what? The clement gold going into some butter okay, and some cool. sugar that I just creamed together. Okay. I'm maximizing on the clement gold flavor like as much as I can right now. There's such delicious clement gold oils and flavor in the skin. Mm. And we're gonna get that. And we're gonna use the juice in that beautiful icing a little later. Okay. Mixing it through. Then. In here, I've got some flour and baking powder that's been sifted together. Okay, cool. Okay, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna first 
add some more eggs to this, right. then add the dry to the wet. Okay, okay. I get you, I'm so, with you. With your electric mixer, yes. or if you want to, old school, wooden spoon. And okay. sometimes that's even the better way. It's therapeutic, I've been told. I've never tried it. I have never tried it, I'll admit. We will, we but will. But I hear it's therapeutic. It is, okay. So the reason it looks so light in mm. color is because when you talk about going, uh, your sugar and your butter going pale and fluffy, yeah. it should look like this. And this okay. happens after about seven minutes oh, okay, of cool. mixing. Cool. So that's how you know that you're doing, yeah. you're doing it right. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Then we're adding our eggs. Yeah. <clears throat> gradually. Mm -hmm. Mixing it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just actually added them all, but at home, take your time adding the eggs. Mm. Yeah, a little is bit the, of vanilla. Is there, is there a, a, a sort of a variation for someone who doesn't eat eggs, for example? So if you were, you were vegan, uh, what, what do you do? Allow me to do more research on that. Okay. But I did hear that applesauce makes a good substitute for eggs. Oh. I'll find out more about that. Yeah, just yeah. to yeah. I haven't it. tried it yet, yeah. but I think it's a good solution. Okay, cool, I see. Mix, mix, mix. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all incorporated. Yeah. We start adding our dry ingredients, half of it first. Yeah. I like simple cake recipes. Me too. I don't like spending time in the kitchen with like a lot of like measurements and like specific sciences. But also the thing is baking a cake can be intimidating. It actually sounds very intimidating yeah. until you see a recipe like this that just simplifies the whole process. Absolutely. Uh, but still gives you a beautiful cake at the end of the day and that's what you want. It is. So if you can avoid all of that labor, I say avoid it. Absolutely. Mm. So here we go. Yogurt goes in. That's going to give it a bit of twang. That's the yogurt you've put in there. Uh -huh. eh? okay, bit of twang, a cool. little bit of moisture. Okay. Mix it through. I'd like that it's going to add that creaminess to it as well, to your yeah. mixture there. And then, and then South Africa, what you must also do is wear, wear dark colored clothes. Yeah, or maybe an apron. Wear dark colored clothes yeah. and don't wear an apron. Yeah. Don't wear an apron. Live life on the edge, okay? That's what okay. I say, always. Uh -huh. Okay, well. Have your washing machine on standby to do laundry once you've baked the cake afterwards. I do my own laundry <laughs> so I can mess up my clothes if I want. Okay, cool. We're gonna add that beautiful yeah. last bit of flour and you've got the beautiful batter. I can smell, I like the fact when, you, when you're using citrus, mm. you can smell it before it's even been baked. Oh yes. Okay, so oh, you're yes. gonna keep on mixing that South Africa. Yeah. That's not done. Mm -hmm. Mix it into a beautiful, beautiful smooth batter. Mm -hmm. Then what I do is you can either do one big baking tin, okay. but here's another tip. If you actually divide it amongst two baking tins, yeah. it cooks quicker. Oh, yes, because it's smaller. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So here's a beautiful base. I've got two of them. Love it. Looks so good. If you overcook or overbake your cake, yeah. it's, a, it's not a disaster. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it, does, it doesn't give up. Yeah. The cool tip is to actually divide your layers in half again okay. and add more icing. The icing is creamy, extra moisture, so it compensates for the dryness, because there's nothing worse than a dry cake. Look at you coming through with the hex. And yes, there is nothing worse than a dry cake. I think a lot of people will agree with you. In fact, everyone should agree with you. Yeah. Uh, am I the only person who, when making cake, is, I'm always so tempted to already start eating it. You see the, the corners and the edges here? I'm always nibbling on them and trying to find like, yeah. you can't find any here, because you... Katie, your mixture was good. This is not me, this is Nicole and Kelly, 100%. Okay. I just come hey, in Nicole, every morning. There, my smart girl. There we go. My smart girl. If you bake the cake, you can do whatever you like. You can you do whatever you like as long as you bake it. Okay, so you can start good. snacking on that. So for our icing, we've got sugar and we've got butter cream together. Yeah. We've added some clement gold zest, clement gold juice. Yes. We amp the clement gold up like you have no idea. Yeah. What I do is to, wanted to get that juiciness in there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you add a little bit of this, and then we've got some clement gold curd. Super beautiful, super oh, decadent. Just looks so I'm gonna add a little bit of that there. to the icing as well. So we're adding extra, oh, extra clem and gold oh, flavor. Clem with the clem and gold. You know, you know. Oh man, that is love. That is just love. You are taking love and placing it on a baked cake. There we go. You gotta <laughs> squish it down. You gotta sandwich it. So you get a bit of that drip coming out. And, and then there's you, some more. You gotta really and get at it. Some more. Look at all of that love. People Look are quite that. like people get like quite worked up with icing cakes. Yeah. There's some people that want it like meticulously done, beautifully sculpted. No, I like it messy. I like it messy. I like like a little unevenness. I like these little jaggedy edges yeah. of icing. People get so much character. It, it does. Makes the cake look it does. And also, you bake the cake. Do whatever so you, can you do like. Whatever you want. There we go. So beautiful, beautiful. 
Mm. This, this, this is beautiful. Clem, I love your work. Listen, if you want to get this recipe, please do go on our website. It's www.expressoshow.com. We've got the recipe with all of the ingredients uh, for you to, uh, to try out. Take pictures of your cake when you're done. Show us how it looks. Maybe even show us how creative you got with the decorating at the end uh, yeah. of the process. Just putting all those final touches to it at the top of the cake. Show uh, us. That I always find seals the deal. So show us how yours comes out. And we're done. Oh, Graham? Clem. Graham, for you. Um, Graham can decide. Graham, Graham. Oh my God. You can start making your way. Start making your way slowly. Slowly. Uh, you, you can't don't be shy. You can get up and, and start and I'm not even allowed to okay. eat it, guys. That's the pain. Uh, they they sisters. like to be served. So now I must actually also, after Please, making the cake for them, get up and go deliver it to My them. word. My word. Uh, oh, that looks so good. So, sorry, because don't forget, so every day we want to celebrate. celebrate. And, and we celebrate with cake. We, I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, I'll bring the cake to you guys now. But go on our website. It's expressoshow.com. Get the recipe. Of course, this is brought to life with uh, or by our Woolies uh, Clem and Gold. It's easy to peel, sweet and juicy, just the way you like it. Mm. Okay. So I'm chatting to Umalume Mosa here. He's owned a small clothing factory for years now, and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker, and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner, that's a habit worth keeping. Welcome back. It's a Wednesday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Thanks for joining us. Now, um, I think when you think about it, whether it's your, it's your phone, uh, your bank account, your email, your laptop, or anything that comes with a button, we all have passwords. So many. So you, need, you need access to it. You so pick up your passwords. phone, you need to type in a code or make a pattern, Everything, scan yeah. your fingerprint, yeah. whatever it takes. I, I, I enjoy a fingerprint scan now because yeah. there are so many passwords in my life. Are you, the, are you the kind of guy who has one password for everything? I used to be. I used yeah. to be. And then, like, many years ago, we, we also did a segment on the show talking about uh, the dangers of that, and I decided to, on that very same day, to change every password to something different. I, 
end up as a result of having different passwords for everything, changing my passwords on the daily because I'll forget <laughs> and then have to reset. And <laughs> Which reset is maybe the best thing so that I'm you could do. Everyone, not even I know the password. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how safe Brilliant. I am, man. Ah, oh, that's a little bit crazy, man. Now, of course, as we continue to highlight essential fraud and safety <sighs> tips, Nedbank are cautioning us to never use the same passwords for our social media accounts and our banking platforms. And it makes sense because it's very simple. If a hacker accesses one of your passwords, then they potentially have the key to all of your platforms, including your banking details too. And don't keep them similar with like a minor change like mm. 01 and 02. Yeah. You know, we know passwords can be hard to remember. I can certainly speak from experience, but never use your name, your surname, or your birth date as your password. These are far too easy to figure out um, and can cost you a lot of money and get you into some serious trouble. Absolutely. Like we've said before, your bank will never call you, will never email you or SMS you and ask you no, for sir. your banking PIN. And so under no circumstances should you share these. In fact, just put the phone down immediately when somebody just says something <laughs> in any way remotely related to that. It's the most likely scam. So please never share your details and report fraud immediately. And just you know, be aware of where you put those details as well. Um, fishers, and I mean fishing in the, in the stealing data sense, can get yes. from your social media platforms just as easily. They can find out what your pet's name is. Um, they can get a huge amount of information. So please stay safe and alert and always trust your instincts. Listen to that little voice. Mm -hmm. And if you're still unsure about the legitimacy of an email, especially your message or a call that you've got, you can contact the Nedbank fraud line on 08 hundred double one zero nine two nine and certainly report any fraud on Nedbank's money app. Listen to the voice. You're with your Feel Good Breakfast show, Expresso, here on SABC3. Here's a question for you. Have you ever been in a situation where life throws you a curveball and you need some extra cash, but as in right now? Well, you're not alone, especially as 2020 has shown us. And whilst you may consider asking a friend or the bank for a loan, pawning is actually a quick and hassle-free way to get your hands on some quick cash. And here to tell us everything we need to know about it uh, is CFO and co-founder of Cash Converters Southern Africa, Peter Forshaw. Mr. Peter, my good old friend, so good to have you back. Thank you, Tabisa. That's great. Great to be back. Uh, we know that cash converters are known for buying and selling, but you also pawn products. What exactly does it mean to pawn a product? Well, pawning a product means that uh, you actually get a, an advance, a cash advance against your product. So you don't have to actually sell the item. So you're really using it as a pledge uh, to, get, to get a loan. That's very interesting, Peter, but what is the, the history of pawning? Uh, because from what I understand, this is an age-old loan system. A absolutely. Uh, pawning has been around uh, since the fifth century in China. Um, it's it's, it's a, been a very popular form of short-term access to cash. It's It's got a long history of uh, growing up in, in Europe. Um, and it's very popular in, in, in places like uh, the UK, Australia, uh, and, and, and America. So it's a, it's a really a, a worldwide accepted way for people to get short-term uh, access to, to cash. And it's been around in South Africa for, for, for many, many, many years. Um, although it hasn't really been mainstream um, uh, in, in businesses like, uh, like cash converters. You know, Peter, there's been so much interest around pawning. I mean, we've seen all these reality shows pop up on TV about it. There are many stories. What are some of your standout stories to do with pawning? I think a, a lovely story is um, one of the most famous pawn transactions that, that ever took place was uh, Queen Isabella of, of Spain actually pawned the, the, her jewels uh, to fund... Uh, Christopher Columbus going out and actually discovering the Americas. So we mustn't think pawning and the concept of pawning is only uh, for normal people, even kings and queens use it. Uh, so that's just a lovely story from the history books. Wow, that is so, so interesting. Well, I better find my jewels very quickly because I am in need a bit of a trip, Peter. Well, you know, Peter, here in South Africa, we, a lot of us have come to know and love cash converters. But when did you become uh, pawnbrokers? 
When we started cash converters in South Africa, we purely focused on the buy and sell component. Um, the main reason for that was at the early stages in the 90s and early 2000s, there was no real regulation and um, uh, rules regarding pawnbroking. And it was only with the introduction of the National Credit Act that it actually formalized and regulated how pawnbroking was, was, was to be done. And it was at that point um, that we felt that we wanted to introduce the product to South Africa because it really gave guidelines, guidance as to as to how you pawn broke, um, particularly with regards to the costs and the and the responsibilities. Um, as a matter of interest, uh, uh, cash converters in Australia, which is where uh, cash converters uh, originated, have been pawning for many, many years, but their legislation was was ahead of the curve and in place. Well, Peter, I have to tell you this story. I always thought about the TV show uh, Loan Shucks when I heard uh, the word pawning, but it seems like it's quite uh, a smart short-term loan option. Well, 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 it is to be said. And I think, uh, I think that the great thing about uh, uh, taking out a pawn or getting, getting pawn in your product is it's, it's really extremely quick. It's extremely easy. Um, it, although it's regulated by the National Credit Act, it doesn't impact on your, your credit history in any way. There are no requirements from an affordability perspective. Um, so it's really easy. You really bring your goods in and based on the value, the, the intrinsic value of the items, that will give guidance as to how much you, you're able to borrow. So the great thing about it, it's easy, it's hassle-free, um, and it's, very, it's a very simple concept. If you've got something of value, um, you pawn it. And if you want to get the item back, you come back at the agreed uh, 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 repayment period, you pay the money, which includes the fees, and you get your item, uh, item back. So it's really a very quick, easy, simple way of getting access to cash, which in these days, particularly as we go forward with the impact of COVID-19, I think lots of people are going to, to need cash and don't necessarily want to sell their goods. So you have the option of getting your goods back, which is really fantastic. Well, Peter, you've got my full attention here. I think that you are right to say a lot of South Africans are under pressure right now. And during this time where people want uh, to stretch their money a little bit extra, this is such an incredible way to do that. But uh, stay with us because later on, Peter is actually going to be showing us how to pawn. Apparently, it's a quick and easy process, uh, but we'll learn from Peter in, a, in just a bit.
Well, we're back with Peter Forshaw, the CFO and co-founder of Cash Converters Southern Africa, and we're chatting all things pawning. Need some quick cash? Well, here's how you can do it. Uh, Peter's here to tell us more about that. Peter, as a practical example, let's just say I'm in need of 5,000 Rand, and I decide to pawn a personal item like my old phone. How does it all work if I had to go to a cash converter store? What do I do? Right, well, the first thing is you need to take the item into the store, um, the, the, the only requirement is you need to be over the age of 18 um, and you, you, the item has to be yours. You have to be the legal owner of that item. You take it into to one of the cash converter stores, into the buy shop, and uh, you, you negotiate with the buyer in that, that environment. And depending on the value of the item, it'll depend on how much money you can um, borrow against that item. So you're, you're effectively using that item as a, a form of security. You're pledging that item. Um, once you've agreed on the price, then you'll hand the item over and cash converters then holds that item uh, for the period, which is uh, a 30-day loan, and they safely look after it and hold it um, in the, the, the shop. Now, there's a there's an added advantage in, in, in that you can choose the way you want to get the money, so you can receive the money in the form of cash, or alternatively, you can use our um, Cashies card, and what Cashies card is, is it's a Visa card um, onto which the money will get automatically loaded. The fantastic thing about the Cashies card is it's safe. You can walk away with the money safely on the card and you can go and draw it out at any uh, FNB ATM and the first withdrawal is sponsored so you don't pay for it or you can use that card at any um, point of sale device that accepts Visa or MasterCard. So it really is as simple as that. At the end of the period, when you come back and collect your item, uh, the item will be returned to you once you've paid and settled, settled your, your obligation up. This is really so, so smart, and it sounds so hassle-free as well. But what happens to my phone while you guys have it? How long do I have to, to pay you back? To be so, the period is stipulated on the agreement. It's clearly um, uh, 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 highlighted on the agreement, and it's a period of 30, of 30 days. And what we do is, is we keep that product safely under our control, in our store for you while um, you, you, you have taken out the pawn transaction. So it's our responsibility, the store is responsible for that item. And when you come back, we, we, we give it back to you. So what we'll do is we'll wrap it, we'll put it in protective uh, packaging. So for example, in bubble wrap or in uh, cling, uh, cling film, and we'll store it. And if it's high value items, it'll go into a safe or into a secure lockup facility with, within the store. So you can rest assured that, uh, that your item will be safe. And one of the biggest things about pawnbroking is the trust. Consumers have such a trust with the pawnbroker. They trust the pawnbroker that they're going to get fair value for, for their loan, as well as they trust the, the pawnbroker that the pawnbroker will return that product to them. So it, it, trust is such an important part about this, this relationship that a cash converter store has with its client. Well, the one thing that Cash Converters has been built on, really, and from my understanding of your business, has been trust. And having experienced your business and having been to a few of your outlets myself, I know that the people that work there are such trustworthy people, and anyone going into your stores is in good hands. But uh, you already have sold this to me. But what are some of the benefits uh, of pawning? Why would you recommend it to someone? Well, I, I think it goes back to the simplicity. Um, it's it's transparent. You're in charge of the of the transaction. You 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 are the person who is negotiating. So you will get your fair value on the item. Uh, you don't have to borrow the full amount. So if you want a small amount, you don't have to be burdened by having to make a big uh, repayment. You you can get the amount of money that you need at that particular point in time. So I think that's the first thing. It's related to the value of the item and, and what, you, what you need. And the other benefit is that it doesn't require um, any of the onerous uh, reporting requirements or scorecard requirements or uh, looking up in terms of your credit uh, records. It's a simple, it's a simple process, but it is regulated, and you are protected in terms of the of the National Credit Act. And if for some reason at the end of the contract, at the end of the thirty days, you're unable to make the payment. There are no negative ramifications uh, in terms of your credit record 
or in terms of any obligations that you may have. You simply do not have to come back and get the item. Um, and that, that is also a, a, a big bonus. It's really simple, um, simple, simple borrowing. It works for consumers. It satisfies short-term cash requirements. Peter, it is simple borrowing that comes with a whole lot of peace of mind. Peter Forshaw, of course, is the CFO uh, and founder of Cash Converters here in Southern Africa. Thank you so, so much for your time. You have been fantastic. We've learned so much this morning about pawning. Thank you so much. Been an absolute pleasure and, uh, and good luck. Uh, and all the cash converter stores are now open under level three. So you can go in to a store near you to find out more about how to pawn your items. You can visit them online and read up all about it. They've made it very, very easy and convenient. Cashconverters.co.za Who says second hand is second best? At Cash Converters, you can buy top brands at bargain prices and sell your goods for instant cash. Well, today we are all about the home. We're taking a look at ways to explore, appreciate, and enjoy your mm. home. And one of those ways that you can do so is through investing a bit of time into gardening, whether it is planting uh, seeds for uh, vegetables, mm -hmm. or maybe you're pruning your flowers, cutting the lawn. Uh, we've asked you to share pictures, of, pictures with us on social media and let us know what you've been getting up to in the outdoors of your very own backyard. So show us what's up in your garden projects. Yes. Uh, Rika van Jarsveld says she made an indoor garden uh, with butternuts, tomatoes and potatoes and some mini succulents as well. So that is pretty sure. cool. I hope that she started that uh, just before lockdown and look how much she's grown already. And then we've got another picture that came through from Deborah Felix with her little home okay. garden. I Wonderful like hanging, hanging oh, plants, hanging if you will. Plants. Another one from Rika van Jarsveld coming through um, as well. Uh, there it is. You got it? Yes. There we go. Oh, that. Okay, that, that's it. And then we have one from <laughs> Colofelo Teledi also showing us um, hey, that little garden. Colofelo, very nice. And yesterday mm. we were cooking with all kinds of green things, and those are looking like leafy green veggies over there. Very nice. And then mm. Sandra van Veek also sent us a picture of some beautiful garden work there. I, I wish, I wish my 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 thumbs were so green that I could tell you exactly what they. Oh, that looks like baby spinach, right? It looks like what? mint. Mint? I would say mint. Mint? Baby mint? spinach? I don't know. I don't know. I Sandra, don't know. You, maybe Sandra can let us know exactly Either way, what it, it looks is. very healthy. Yeah. Like, it's been very well grown. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. look at those beautiful leaves. All right, well, keep on sharing those images with us. Let us know what you're doing with your home and garden projects during this lockdown, how you're keeping yourself entertained by investing time into your beautiful living spaces. But in the meantime, we're about to go to the kitchen. Something mm. delicious is cooking. Mm and something green by the looks of it. And I've got to ask you, Nicole, because I, I get a sense, like I, I have very green fingers and I love it. And I developed yeah. my own little, I did some landscaping, got a beautiful little section of garden now. Is that something, because you use a lot of fresh greens in the recipes, or do you have green fingers? Yes, I do actually have green fingers. I am so passionate about plants. I actually look after all the plants in studio as well. So that you you. Know, yeah. Is that how they stay they, alive? That's how they stay alive, <laughs> yeah. And then I also take care of the plants in front here, which is our little home farm. So so I'm actually want to use it today as well. We've got a little basil growing. I've got mustard in there. I've got radish sprouts. Oh, I've got, wow. um, I think there's a bit of coriander, rocket. And so they all get to like a certain age where they're perfect for sprouts and micro herbs. And then you can either like transplant it or we just um, renew it every time. Just keep going. Yeah, just... so I love it. Um, I mean, the, the nutritional value of micro herbs, we've covered it so many times on the show. It is massive. Yeah. But isn't there something like a deep sense of satisfaction when you're using your own like stuff that you've grown yourself? It's really, it's, it's, there's nothing better, especially when you see them happy. I feel like the plants almost like <laughs> singing to you. When you see their leaves are nice and green and shiny, I'm sure like all of you guys that are growing you plants at home, you feel the plant like saying, thank you for looking after me. I, and what I like about this is all like, um, soil free so you could literally use it straight from straight the away. and it's yeah. obviously we're growing it in a very sterile space yes um it's absolutely beautiful and i, I doubt there is a person out there nicole don't worry that that doesn't form an emotional connection yes. with the, the <laughs> we're not the all friends, crazy <laughs> the friends that they're helping to grow absolutely beautiful well we're going to introduce some of this beautiful green now into a wonderful cheesy recipe Clover cheese is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares. Clover, for the love of cheese. Made with love by Clover. 
for the love of cheese and there's a lot of love for cheese in this place more than just a simple bowl of pasta our clover feta and broccoli pasta is a quick and simple dinner bursting with herby fresh flavors now nicole is going to show us how fuss free this quick dinner can actually be um so you're out there with the zest already i know that you're going to use this to activate the, the flavors of the Yay. um our veggies that's that's something you've taught me over the last week um so in a broader kind of sense explain to us what you're making Okay, so I'm going to be making a pesto. So you can see the beautiful pasta is coated in like this green sauce mm. there with the feta on top. So your pesto is consisting with a little bit of lemon zest because I feel like lemon, broccoli and cheese, it's just so, so, so a very beautiful special flavor combo. profiles. Sure. Yeah. So we're gonna put some lemon juice as well for that beautiful zing. I don't wanna go too crazy with the lemon because you also have a beautiful tang from the feta as well. So I'm going to add that to the sauce as well with our broccoli. So you just blanch it so you can see it's still very crunchy, it's still hard. Sure. You don't want it to be too soft. Too mushy and either. soft, sure. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we, we talk about it all the time, but we're, there's almost a perfect point to cook your, I find, to cook your broccoli where it gets that beautiful nutty flavor as opposed to kind of cooking it too far apart from taking all the nutrients out of it once it starts to lose that that color but the, the flavor profile changes quite dramatically when you overcook broccoli i find the scent it's, it's got a very gassy smell yeah uh, yeah <laughs> there's no nice way of saying uh, yeah. it or saying it but um yeah i know it's, it's not a very nice it's not, broccoli. It, yeah, yeah. No, when it starts it to turn like a bluey green then yeah. you've overcooked it you've got but you know the nice thing about it if you have overcooked it it's still okay we can still save it that's why we've still got our lemon We've gonna add our garlic. We're gonna add some beautiful extra virgin olive oil in here as well. So I'm just gonna add a good glug. You don't want it too, um, too little either because you want it to be your sauce. You want mm. it to coat. And There's it's gotta be help enough it. of it to get to, to coat the, the full pasta. Exactly. Um, so what typifies a pesto? How would, because I'm obviously, I associate pesto with basil. I almost thought that that was what pesto was, that it had to be. But yep. you can make pesto with spinach. pine nuts, with spinach, with, mm -hmm. with a whole range of things. You can make it, um, a pesto is like a herb base, or you can also get like a sun-dried tomato pesto or red pepper pesto. It's just the consistency of it. Okay. So it's not like a, too much of a dressing, and it's not too thick as a paste either. It's a little bit of an in-betweener. So we're gonna add some of this beautiful clover feta. I've got the plain one going in there. If you wanna do a herbage, we've got mm. the herb flavored one as well. And they've got pepper. It's entirely what you what you prefer. If you want a more And what you've got in your fridge right now. Exactly, it's what it, you better <laughs> have it in your fridge. what you got, yo, yeah. <laughs> cool, so I'm gonna just blitz this up quickly and then you're gonna serve it over your pasta, which I've just par cooked there as well. So this one, you've got to just give it a good shake. I'm going to add a little bit more extra virgin olive oil. So you want, that's the nice thing with the pesto, is you want to play with the with the, the consistency and, you, and the seasoning. You don't go too crazy on the salt, because you, that beautiful salt flavor is going to come from the feta. So you mm, can just add a little bit of Of course, that's the best thing about feta, is that it's got that lovely, it packs a salty punch. Yes, it's, it's the, the brine that it, that it, mm. that it almost like preserves the feta in a way, and it gives it that beautiful flavor. There you go. There you go. Now we're winning at life. Winning, green, oh, like God. we've been doing a lot of green lately, and it's just so Yeah, I was so gonna say, was amazing. that intentional, or is it just, you know, how has that happened? Well, everything's in season now, Graham. So like, green is your winter veg, you've got your growing, if people have been growing at home, they would have seen your spinaches are in Which season. Which clearly they have, I'm so impressed. Exactly. With the of people that are growing over lockdown. Yeah, you've got your spinaches are in, your your, collie, your collies and your broccoli are in, your, um, your winter squash and veg are also in, that's all growing season now. So what you do is you just give this a good toss. If you want to toss this, I even had an afterthought of this over roasted cauliflower. Mm -hmm. So you've got your broccoli with your roasted cauliflower. I think that could yeah, be a fine and combination. I have, I'm, I'm roasting cauliflower like almost every night. In, in varying ways. Yeah. As last night, cut them into big cross sections like that. Yeah. Um, a bit of uh, garam masala, some curry powder. Oh, wow. um, a little bit of salt on it, and just got it a nice, gave it a nice char like that, almost like um, collie steaks. Yes. Coming out of the absolutely amazing, also I love that. some some broccoli as well. Um, Beyond beautiful. the boiling. Yeah, I know, completely. <laughs> um, and it's just about texture for me. You, you want to introduce a, 
a texture, but that looks amazing. That's popping with color. It looks... Yeah, yeah so, oh. I mean, it's not a cheesy pesto bake or pasta <laughs> without more cheese. More cheese, more cheese, more better. So we're gonna um, add a little bit more of these little veggie um, greens. Little micro little greens, pesto. beautiful. So the entire recipe, this amazing creation, is available on expressoshow.com. In fact, we house all of our recipes there and a ton of inspiration on the culinary side. So if, you, if you're looking for a little bit of extra inspiration on a cold winter's night, um, go right there and whip yourself out this beautiful uh, broccoli pesto and feta cheese pasta. It looks beautiful, huh? Oh, thank you. Enough for both of us, actually. <laughs> yeah, go for All right. it. Um, so as easy as it is to make this, let's take you through a blow-by-blow blow of how we arrived at this beautiful final creation. Made with love by Clover. Clover, you can make my day. Clover cheese is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares. Clover, for the love of cheese. Made with love by Clover. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your feel-good breakfast show, Espresso on SABC3. Welcome to the start of a brand new day. Hey, the start of a brand new month. Mmm, 1st of July. Happy 1st of July. Indeed, to you yes. too. Now, nothing says winter quite like a movie night under the blankets with the family snacking on rusks and hot chocolate. And that's exactly why we've asked you to send us your movie night dip photos for our 24-hour dipping challenge with Omar Rusks. As always, we have loved all the entries, so thank you so much for sharing your photos with us. And the competition is still open until tomorrow morning, but we thought we'd show off some of our favorite entries this far. And there's been a lot, but we had to obviously scale it down to get the best ones in. Absolutely. Our first photo is from uh, Sean, Sean May, which she captioned, best combo. Look at that. Yo, all mm. those moves. <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't agree more. Both cozied up in bed with the movies on standby and the pup a little too eager for a bite. We love it. Thank you very much for that. Sean Look at Ray. him licking his lips. He's like, mmm. I'm ready. Mama, I'm yes, ready. Sir. Put me in, coach. <laughs> now, our next photo is from Nkutua Ashwin Luke, who is living her best life. L look at this. Okay. The movie's on. Coffee's hot. Rusk are dipped. And the biggest smile we have ever seen. So thanks so much for this entry. And also, by the way, I love your jersey. It is so vintage, yes. Coming, mm, in, with the coming in with the photo over there.
there. And uh, now our very next entry scores a thousand points for pure cuteness. Look at that. So this is uh, Kumashni Naidu uh, who sent us this adorable pic of her two little ones and says there's no better way to de-stress after a long day of homeschooling. Absolutely, we have to agree with that. Eh? Look at that lips, <laughs> just like that. And then our last entry is from the super mom, Mary Napoleon. She says, movie time with my family, keeping ourselves warm with a heater, but extra warm with tea and Omar Russ. Mary, we absolutely love this photo. And you guys took look so snug and look so amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this. And we are definitely feeling all the love coming through with that photo. Loving it very much. Thank you to everyone who's entered so far. But remember, you can still stand a chance of winning because the competition closes tomorrow at 11 a.m. So make sure that you enter either on our Expresso Facebook page or on our Twitter page and send us a photo of you dipping a Omar during your movie night. Now we've got three coffee plungers and Omar Rusk's hampers up for grabs and they could be yours. Remember that T's and C's do uh, apply and can be found on expressoshow.com. I'm going to... Go on and have a dip right now. How about it? How about it? With Omar Rusks, it's always dipping time. From the first thing in the morning right through to that midnight snack in bed. What is your favorite dipping time? Oh, what a morning we've had. I've really enjoyed myself oh, here. Uh, we've spent the morning appreciating what you've been able to achieve at home during this lockdown as we've been getting to know, you know, our homes better over the last 98 days of lockdown. Uh, it's been so inspiring. I was, I was laughing with, with Kat earlier because I literally moved into my place just before lockdown. Yeah, I remember. And it, it honestly feels like I've lived there for about five years. Because you've now, done so much. We've <laughs> had so much time to get to know every kind of nook and cranny and space and I've loved kind of getting to um, be, become a, a real landscaper. Yeah. I, I literally redid the entire garden yeah. by hand. Absolutely love it. But, but you've got an enthusiastic young man that's keen for it I've, as I've got well. A little, he's, he's got a little miniature rake and a... Look, he's, he's more of a Hinton Center help. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a, it really is an opportunity for us to bond, which yeah. I love, man. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's given a lot of us the opportunity to create a haven, something that is safe, mm. something that's inspiring, mm. stimulating enough to get us through this very difficult period. And that's why we'd like to leave you with uh, a little food for thought from Cecilia Ahern, or Ahern, who is the author of the very notable novel uh, that got turned into film, P.S. I Love You, if you're a well, fan of that. Mm. She's said a lot of things, she really has, and this is one of the things she said. Home isn't a place. It's a feeling. Oh, hey? I love that. It's a feeling. It's a how, how it makes you feel. No, completely. And, and that really hit home for me when I took, got out of the bubble, especially with having little Bubba in, uh, in that space. Yeah. It's this like baby bubble warm place and having to leave that, how desperate I was to get back home, despite having been stuck in home with lockdown, just to get back there um, and be with my family in my home. I absolutely love it. So hopefully you feel the same. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Home isn't a place, it's a feeling. And right now, Jamie Lee Domberg and I are feeling absolutely pumped up. Of course, later on in the show, we have a Facebook Live session that we're going to be taking you through. But everybody came in with all the love and they absolutely loved that core session. So we thought we'd put out a challenge to everybody out there oh. for you to try to see how you can do, where you can get in the challenge and you can even incorporate it in our session later on at Facebook Live. So Jamie Lee Domberg, you ready to shake and bake? Yes, I am. What we're heels, doing, guys, we're grabbing a chair away. and we're getting active. We're doing a gift call challenge. You guys are gonna join us. Grab a chair or bunkie or anything that you do have. And we're gonna start off with level one. Jamie, you wanna show everybody out there? Yes. So it's a side plank, just like we did in the show earlier. Getting your elbow onto the chair, and you're gonna start off with your hand, Jamie. This is the yes. level one. So hands on the chair, you've got a straight arm over here. Other arm is directly opposite, facing into the sky, and you're gonna lower those hips down to the ground and then straight back up into the air. Okay, so round number one, level one challenges. If you can do 10 reps in total of this, you are sorted an A4 away for level number two, which is dropping down to the elbow, which you might have seen earlier in the show. So drop into the elbow, level number two, see if you can get it right. Two reps, or oh, 10 reps in total, starting off with your hand on the chair. If you're feeling strong enough and you're feeling up to it and you wanna to go to level three, straight away what you can do is then lift your arm up into the air. So level three will be lifting the arm up into the air once again and making sure that you you can ah! cut 10 reps in total. How are we doing there, Jamie? Still I'm already burning. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, guys, so if you want to step it up, even more level four is quite a tricky one, so you can bow out at any time, but try 10 reps in total. So for this one, elbows on the ground once, sorry, elbows on the chair once again, but what we're doing is, as we're coming down, we're actually going to lift this leg up into the air. So we're going down, and then lifting the leg up and your body together. All right, so coming back down once again, Jamie, you're not joining me? Uh, you said I can buy, I can buy <laughs> out if I want to. I was Diva definitely man, bowing out for the <laughs> last one. All right, guys, so we're almost at that last level. Right, so lifting your leg up every single time and then straight back up into the air. Last challenge, if you're really feeling like Superman and you're up to it, go onto the ground, get your foot down on the chair. We're working that medial line now. And as you rise up, Catch in the building, I see. Where you at, brother? Catch, you joining me? I'm all about this, bro. I'm all about this right now. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, the, the, the luxe life out there. So get down on the ground for your last round and try to lift your leg up into the air and then lower it straight back down once again. And you're going to work that media line. That's round number five. See how many levels you can do in total. And of course, join us later. Jamie, Lee, Domberg, and myself are going to be taking you through one epic Facebook Live. See you soon, guys. <laughs> Have a blessed day, everybody. <laughs> Espresso Show, made with love by Clover. Uh, never feel good production.